I've actually wanted, needed even, this bench for a while now, but I just couldn't get motivated enough to sit down and really think about it. I typically require some kind of visual inspiration to get going in the shop, and it was difficult for me to wrap my head around a 4x8 bench. And then I was triggered by two different things. First, when I went to pick up my old Unisaw in Houston a few months back, I took a tour of Johnson Space Center. The shuttle and the rockets and all that stuff was amazing, but what really caught my attention were the lab spaces. The fixtures and jig tables and tools, and not only in Mission Mars Lab, but also in the vintage exhibits. There was lots of aluminum and modularity, and it all just looked and came together as sort of so modern and advanced that it was untouchable. Still, I kept rolling that look and feel around in my head and thinking about how I could use it without coming across as some kind of workshop cosplay nerd. And then I thought back to an artist that I've always really enjoyed, Tom Sachs. Tom is an honest-to-goodness NASA nerd and builds what he calls NASA prototypes out of mostly plywood and screws. Because he has this Willy Wonka-esque sense of humor and an amazing eye for detail, these objects just come across as more fun takes on the untouchableness of NASA rather than the costume variations of such. So then I thought, what if I approach this thing like Tom, only I cleaned things up a bit and kept it all functional? I don't know if any of this makes sense to anyone out there at all, but it was enough to get me going on this project. So I started in SketchUp with the idea that aluminum extrusion might be the perfect material to use as the base for the bench. I got the dimensions down and then started dividing those dimensions into sections for both sustainer ports and drawers. Once I was confident that my design would work, I started shopping for the extrusion and the hardware that I would need to put it all together. I found a bunch of surplus on eBay, bought some new stuff from 8020, and once that all arrived, got busy cutting and machining. It was a solid day's worth of messy work. So quick explanation of what's going on here. You just saw me cut all of my 8020 to length, and then afterwards I threaded the center hole in all the extrusions. And the reason I did this is because of the type of joint I'm going to use. This whole project is using butt joints. Now to make this joint, you thread that hole, and then you use this little piece of hardware from 8020 that's essentially just a clip with the button head allen going through it. So this threads into the holes that we threaded. And then that clip threads into the extrusion that you're butting up against. And now you need a way to tighten up that bolt, right? So this is a jig also sold by 8020. And it slides onto the extrusion. It has a little mark that you center up with your joint. Then you drill an access hole. And then this access hole allows you to get in with the hex. So you get a pretty tight joint with minimal effort. And it looks pretty good. There is, however, one problem. 8020 is great stuff. It's used in all sorts of industries. It's light, it's strong, looks great. But the real benefit to using 8020 in a situation like I am is these T tracks. And they, this is 40 series 8020, and it fits Festool clamps perfectly. Um, and that gives me all kinds of clamping opportunities around the table. But when you're doing a butt joint like this, I have an open side which I can get a clamp to, but once this is tightened up, I will no longer have access to this T track to get a clamp in. So what I did was, I got on my CNC table and I just machined out this jig. And real easy to do with a router and a bushing. And the end result is this. And what this does is it creates clearance so that I can still get in my clamps. And I also opened it up a little bit more on the end, so in the future if I have a jig or a clamp of some sort that needs a 5 16th eye bolt, which fits this track perfectly, I have access to do so. <clears throat> so it's a pretty easy deal. You just clamp it up with the uh, the jig and get your router out and go to town. But I have a lot of pieces to do to keep all of my clamp access points open. So uh, yeah, I guess I'm going to get to it. I'm using a quarter inch four flute carbide end mill here with no lubricant at all. I think the key is to be mindful of heat. If you heat up the end mill too much, you will essentially weld the aluminum shavings to the bit and ruin it. I went with a really slow feed and speed, took my time, and was able to machine all 24 of the slots that I needed without any noticeable doling of the bit. Afterwards, I cleaned up the raw edges with the file and a bit of sandpaper.
I was really happy with how they turned out. In any case, and with that done, I could start putting together the frame. Because I'm using captured joints, I had to be pretty specific with the order in which I assembled. I started with the side, added the bottom supports, and then bolted on the other side. With the basic substructure of the bench done, I could move on to the dividers. I opted to use 12mm pre-finished Baltic birch. I cut everything to manageable sizes with my track saw first, and then cut each divider to its final size using the table saw for rips and the MFT for crosscuts. So the dividers in the workbench are made up of 80-20 uprights with half-inch ply walls. The problem is this extrusion doesn't support half inch thickness for the walls. So what I've had to do is dado each side of the wall so that it slips in to the extrusion. Not that big of a deal, but something to be aware of. Oh, and there's one more thing. Because we are using internal fasteners, our side walls won't be able to fit all the way down because it hits the fastener. So we're having to notch every corner. That way, it slides right into place. To machine all of these dados, I set up my dado set with a scrap piece of ply. The idea here is to get the inserts to a final thickness that just barely allows you to insert the panels into the 8020 by hand. You don't want any play or rattle on the fit at all. Afterwards, I set up a little makeshift jig with 8020 to cut all of the corners. It went really quickly, and before long I was able to start mocking it all up. So I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to configure these dividers. I'm still dealing with that offset that's created from the half inch plywood against the 40 millimeter aluminum extrusion. And I've got to space out my sliders away from the plywood so they will clear that extrusion. And I think what I'm going to do is I have this, these off cuts of poplar from another project. They're four inches wide now. I think I'll rip them to two inches and then use them vertically rather than horizontally so that I can space drawers anywhere I want and not be limited. Um, I think that'll work. The other thing I'm thinking about doing is a pan goes over this whole thing and I think I'll put pocket screws along the top. I don't know how effective they'll be but at least I'll have them there if I need them. And you won't be able to see them so that's not a big deal. So yeah, almost done with all the machine work on the the uh, dividers, and once that's done, it should be smooth sailing. I started by drilling four equally spaced pocket holes on the tops of each divider. Afterwards, I ripped down all of the poplar to two inches, and then painted them with some machine gray before gluing and screwing them down to the dividers. With all of that finally done, I went ahead and installed the bottom slides on each side of the divider as well, figuring I would get these set and level now so that I could just use spacers to do the rest of the slides once the bench was assembled. Finally, these pesky dividers were done and I could move on. I decided to go ahead and install both the caster plate and the casters to the base so that my workpiece was mobile. Afterwards, I flipped the whole thing back over again and got ready for final assembly. So I know each one of my sustainer drawers, or at least the opening, is 430 millimeters wide. So I just made a story stick, and this allows me to get my spacing on these uprights as well as these cross members right. Now obviously all this uh, extruded aluminum is pre-drilled, but in the joinery there's a little play, and that's why I've done this spacer, just to help me and make sure once I get to the end of the row that I'm perfectly spaced and ready to go. Once all of those extrusions were locked down, I could start moving over my dividers and sliding them into place. It's here though that I realized I had forgotten the supports on the end caps for the pan, as well as the dados on the pan itself. Luckily I had just enough scrap left to make the end cap supports, and all I had to do was drill access holes so that I could tighten them down. Also luckily, I had kids home from school that could help me cut the dados into the pan so that it could all slide into place. Hurdle jumped and I moved on to finishing the assembly. The upper rail slid on nicely, as did the top supports and side rails, but I was left with a small detail I hadn't thought about. The pan itself had an exposed plywood edge, and I didn't at all like the look of it, so I grabbed some cheap aluminum angle and used it as edge banding of sorts. With that installed, I was ready for what would become one disaster after another, the CNC machined MFT top. But that three ring circus is going to have to wait until part two, where I will also be CNCing uh, sustainer shelves, building drawers, and hopefully outfitting this thing for some real work. So, until then, 
One small step for man. 